will begin shortly. The Soundcheck Podcast is coming up. Please continue to hold. up with the Soundcheck podcast and everything that's happening in the New Sounds empire, just go to newsounds.org and follow us on social media. All of the icons are in the top right corner of the page. All of our other musicians are currently playing for other customers. Please stay with us, and someone will play for you in just a moment. Sounds.org. It's time for another of our live in-studio performances in the series we call the Soundcheck Podcast. Streaming live on Facebook and YouTube, I'm John Schaefer. The experimental pop duo Buke and Gase has collaborated with everyone from the National to the Blue Man Group. They're named after two instruments that they invented, a baritone ukulele and a hybrid guitar bass. But their new album, called Scholars, has a more electronic sound, including especially a device called the Arcs, which they also developed. They're here with their instruments and others to play some songs for us in the studio today. Beginning with Derby, here's Buke and Gase.
That's called Derby, a live performance here in our studio from Buke and Gase. It's a song from the album Scholars, which is the most recent from this duo with uh, Aaron Dyer singing. Uh, she also plays the Buke, the baritone ukulele, and electronics. Good to see you again. Hi, good to see you too. And Aaron Sanchez had the Gase, the guitar bass, slung over his shoulder, but you were mostly just doing electronics on that song. Yeah, on that one, yes. All right, so um, I was surprised to learn that it's actually been over five years since the last LP from you guys, because mm -hmm. it's not like you've disappeared. It seems to be, you know, the, the two of you seem to be as busy as ever. What, what was the... <laughs> 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 yeah, more or less. I mean, Aaron, do you want to say something about that? I don't know. Yeah, we have been really busy doing well, other um, things. Now, you have, your, Aaron, you have the drone choir. Yeah. And you're the first voice we heard on the last album by The National. Yep. And, and Aaron, y although the days of inventing instruments for Blue Man Group are behind you, you invented the instruments for Bryce Desner's piece, yep. music for yep. wooden strings. Right, and the chord sticks. Yeah. I am still doing some Blue Man work here and there. Oh, really? Yeah, that's still going on on a freelance basis, but that's my other my other life <laughs> yeah at what point do you run out of materials to invent with <laughs> it seems like there is no point um i mean a, a lot of the basis of this project is to in a way invent and and to like create new ways to be this kind of a duo and like perform everything live so you know creating the instruments the buke and the gaze in the beginning was like what can we do with stringed instruments that's more you know, than a normal like guitar setup. Um, and then, um, you know, also playing percussion with our feet and vocals, all, everything at the same time. But then that got to a point where it was like, okay, we need to do, we're done with that. Like we've done everything we can do with that. What else can we do? So then that led us into more electronic stuff. And, you know, it's an interest I've had for many years doing electronic music on my own. Um, so yeah, it was just like, how, what can we do? What ca how can we be this band and, be more creative, use new sounds, you know, kind of like stretch ourselves. Right. And so uh, this, this gets us into the ARCS, spelled A-R-X. What is that? It's basically software that we developed that uh, runs on our computers, and it is a way for us to perform samples. Like, we use this, the computer basically as a big sampler. Mm -hmm. um, that we can trigger other sounds while we're performing. So instead of using the computer as like a looping machine or like we're playing along to a track that's being played in the computer, we're playing the computer. Right. So right. we're we're you know we have yeah. Except Go for ahead. like one song. Except for one song. <laughs> 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 but we might we might try to. There, there's some pieces where it's like oh it's kind of really difficult to play this you know so then we kind of yeah yeah fake it a little bit. But uh, <laughs> most yeah it's just one tune. Um, <laughs> everything else we're kind of like my bass drum. I am triggering a set of percussive elements. So it's like every time I hit it, it'll it'll trigger several beats. Mm -hmm. like, you know, and then I uh, as I repeat that, it becomes a rhythm in itself. So, like an organist who has all four limbs in motion at once, you guys, you know, y y your feet are busy while your hands are playing the instruments and stuff. That it, that's that's where you're triggering all these, a lot of these samples. Yeah, or uh, like less Aaron. so for me lately. I've I've been wanting to stand, so I've been trying to get my mm, triggers away from my feet. Uh huh. <laughs> I would hand. say job only half done. Yeah, only <laughs> half done. <laughs> so yeah, Erin's playing a keyboard controller, and she also has some access to stuff with her feet as right. well. Um, I'm I am oh, I'm trying to stand more. <laughs> <laughs> I, I am also moving because we were traditionally we, we both sat because we had all this stuff to right. do. But now we're exactly. we're like figuring out ways to get a you know to move around and like be free on the stage. Yeah. So now, uh, Aaron, the songs on um, on Scholars. First of all, uh, the the press material that accompanied this suggested that Scholars was a name that the two of you were kind of considering instead of Buke and Gase. Is that yeah. true? Yeah, we were trying to move away. Well, because we felt that Buke and Gase, the name itself, was kind of limiting us <laughs> to the to instruments, the instruments <laughs> basically. <laughs> and well, we can't be Buke and Gase and not play the instruments. But um, it was advised. We were well, advised we, we decided <laughs> it, it didn't really matter in the end. I mean, yeah. if we're, it, you know, a lot of this material, we're not playing the Buke and the Gase all the time, and, and who cares? It's fine. It's just right. a name. 
Right. Um, so, yeah. But uh, what is consistent uh, throughout a lot of your songwriting is, is this, there's, the songs take surprising twists, you know? Uh, a song like Eternity on the record, for example, when it starts, you're not sure which of the two rhythms you're hearing is the one that's actually going to be the rhythm of the song. And, you know, there are all kinds of oblique lyric lyrics at play and stuff like that. It's, it seems like there's, there's an unsettled quality to a lot of the songs. Sure. I mean, a lot of, well, all of it came out of our improvising together and, and we recorded it to track this time um, because we made a mistake and didn't do that on a record. <clears throat> yeah, well, we well, our, our little backstory <laughs> is, and, and this like explains our five year absence in a way, is that we did make a whole other record a couple of years ago and decided to shelve it. We decided we didn't like it. Um, our, our it was too contrived. Yeah, our composing process is always we <laughs> improvise together in a room and we record it all. Mm -hmm. And then we go back and listen and find the music in those recordings. And uh, previously, we were only recording to two track or like, you know, our phone in the room or whatever, just a crappy like, you know, sketch recording. Um, but we, <laughs> you know, and then we would go back, listen, find the songs, create the songs and then relearn how to play them. Mm -hmm. But we were never satisfied with how with our relearned, reperformed uh, version. And so we made a record like that with that process, decided, oh, you know, like something's wrong, like this isn't working. And then we finally figured out that we needed to only use the improv recordings, like the original improv recordings as the end result of the record. Huh. So we went back and started improvising wh while multi-tracking ourselves. So meaning like all our instruments are separated like you normally would do when you're making a real record. Um, but we're improvising the whole time. So then we had all that material to work with. So that's kind of like why, yeah, th it, the songs are crazy. Because <laughs> like <laughs> things, you know, it's not planned. We're, we're, it's just us reacting to each other as we're playing. And then yeah. also with the arcs, because you would switch to a whole new set of sounds with like during an improv, and then we would just all of a sudden be thrown into a new soundscape that we'd have to react to. So it was a lot of us like working with our sounds first and then reacting to the changed sounds and playing off of each other. Right. Yeah. Yeah. So w what Aaron's referring to is like the, in arcs, I programmed a, a, a functionality where you hit a button and it randomizes what you're going to hear. So like we're playing with a certain set of samples or sounds and then you hit this button and they all change mm -hmm. mid while we're playing. And you don't know what's happening. We don't know we what's going to happen and then we have to react to it. So in a way it's like it a compositional a tool. Yeah. <laughs> Well, it's funny. I, I mean, it, you know, it's it's funny how this kind of sounds like the way Brian Eno would, would yeah, make was, records. You mm -hmm. know, I was say, it's not a new concept yeah. to record an improv, and that would be right. the piece. Right. But or playing games in the studio to yeah. kind of spur the creative process. Yeah. And of course, Eno himself had a, an album, My Squelchy Life, which he never released, although little bits and bobs of that would would kind of like dribble out occasionally mm -hmm. and, and like produce other later songs so right. you have all that material who knows it might yeah I become mean, like, something likewise someday. we have many hours of recordings that could be a song but yeah. who knows <laughs> <laughs> all right we're speaking with uh aaron sanchez aaron dyer they are buke and gase they're performing for us today this sunday night uh they'll be in their uh Upstate, uh, general upstate territory, performing at Catskill Mill at, uh, in Catskill, New York, and uh, playing some songs from their most recent album called Scholars. Um, I think we're ready to hear the title track. Here's Buchan Gase. <laughs> Thank you. 
a little different. That is Scholars, a live version of the song that is the title track of the new record by the duo Buke and Gase. Uh, Aaron Dyer, that's A-R-O-N-E, Aaron singing and processing her voice live. <laughs> Aaron Sanchez, that's A-R-O-N, so neither of you spells Aaron correctly, uh, playing the, the Gase, <laughs> <laughs> uh, the, uh, the hybrid guitar bass, and using the, the drum... Aaron to trigger the the electronics, right? Yeah, some of the yeah, it's basically a bass drum sound and some other stuff. Yeah. yeah. So uh, y- you guys were mentioning before how these songs start as improvisations. Aaron, what about the lyrics? Are you do you improvise the lyrics while that's happening, or does that happen later on? Well, this particular song, I had some like the maybe you will, maybe you won't was in the improv. I don't know why. Mm-hmm. <laughs> Um, But then the rest of the lyrics kind of came out of that. So once you've identified bits of the improvisation that you think are, you know, seed material for a song, that's what you start working with? That's how the lyrics? Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. If I hear it, because oftentimes in in improvising, I'm just like, well, I'm not saying anything, but I'm singing and there's stuff coming out (laughs) with consonants. And um, sometimes it sounds like words. Right. That I didn't intend. And sometimes there's actually a theme that I didn't realize was there, and I'll follow that. Mm-hmm. So I'll kind of decipher it. Yeah. And, uh, Aaron, the, the randomizer function that you were mentioning before, do you guys use that live? Or would that just be crazy? <laughs> that would be crazy. I mean, yeah. I mean, it's, it's a, this, this is a, our performance is a juggling act. So it's, it's, very, it's pretty composed. So okay. to, uh, but that would be great. I mean, I would love to... Be we able to improvise we live. <laughs> we, have, we haven't done it too much, but okay. that would be nice. But that would add a whole new level of... Yeah, we'd be a slightly different band, maybe. Yeah. Well, that's... <laughs> <laughs> but this sort of gets back to what you were talking about. The reason for inventing the Buke and the Gase originally was so that you would not be a standard kind of band. And it seems like one of the reasons, for example, that guitarists often use alternative tunings is... You know, sometimes they'll say, well, this is the instrument I play, but I don't want to be stuck there. And when I get into an alternative tuning, it's like a new instrument, and it leads me into new ways of writing. And it's got to be the same when you're inventing new instruments or writing new software, right? Yeah, I mean, but it's also a, a problem. Like, we're solving a problem. 
because uh -huh. we were only a duo. Like we used to have a drummer a long time ago. He left and then we were like, okay, what are we doing? Like, do we get another drummer? And then we just kept writing music together. And then we were like, well, we could play this bass drum while we're, you know, to accent things. And then that just became what we did. And then it's like, from there, it's like, okay, I need, I don't want to just play bass. I want to have more strings on it. So I, you know, I make something that has guitar strings and bass strings so mm -hmm. I can have a broader spectrum of, of harmonics and stuff. So it's just like, th that's our, that's our, approach right I think and, and folks who are watching us uh, can see that the gase the this uh, guitar bass hybrid it's a fretted instrument but the frets are, are are they're leaning away from the center of the guitar right it's called fanned fret yeah. so it has multiple scale lengths the the bass string which is closest you know wh where the bass string normally would be is the longest scale length and then mm -hmm. the, it gets progressively shorter as you go up the strings. Now, do you do all that yourself, or do you send that out to a luthier? I built this one, yeah. I've, I've built all the versions of the gaze. So, okay. Yeah. You should see him. He's so happy when he finishes <laughs> one. <laughs> I've taken pictures. This might be the <laughs> last one, then. <laughs> <laughs> so uh, this is not the only one, then? Um, there's a couple others that are still playable, but they've... Mm -hmm. You know, kind they've of... They've had their day. They've had their day, or they've mm -hmm. been repurposed. And what about the buke? This one, um, this one, uh, our friend Paul Fuster built, um, and it's a, out of an MG Midget hood. Yeah, that's I don't know. and okay. I've been playing this one for years. It's yeah, indestructible. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> it's all steel. Yeah. Well, um, now the uh, so scholars is the the name of the new record. Um, there was an EP called Aaron versus Aaron, right? Yeah. Uh, which. I mean, just the title suggested, uh, you know, that <laughs> there was something going on there that needed to be worked out. Was was that just a title, or were you guys actually trying to work something out? I mean, we're always day? trying to work something out. <laughs> <laughs> I don't think it, it wasn't anything particular at that time. It just sounded like a... Just a fun uh, play it, on the name. Yeah, or just yeah. like, yeah, this, is, this happens all the time. <laughs> <laughs> so do you find that now that you've got the, the arcs and the... And the First of all, writing software is very different from, you know, putting hybrid instruments together out of wood and steel and stuff like that. Yeah, I'm uh, a nerd, you know. So, okay. <laughs> I, I, yeah, I dabble in that stuff, so. All right. Um, and then once you have the software, choosing the hardware, is that like a thing that you have to do? I'm, you're, I'm, I'm way above my pay grade here, so I'm not sure I'm asking the right question. Um, I don't know. <laughs> I mean, it's... it's Sure. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's complicated. Yeah. You have to, there's, yeah. It there's, is complicated. There, it, okay. So. It's, it's working with MIDI, basically. Yes. People I, know know what what that is. I know what MIDI <laughs> is. Yeah. That's so it's, it's a, um, ARCS is a MIDI note mapper controller type thing. Okay. So it's, uh, yeah, if people out there know what that is. So, so it lives in the same world as all these other digital devices that have this connectivity built into them. Sort of. Yeah. Yeah. yeah sort but, of. But, yeah, we needed something that was that no one was making, so kind of had to design the, it. But I think the main reason why we had it too is so that we can switch from switch all of our pedals at once, either mid song or from one song to the next without having to lean over and change everything mm -hmm. every song. Yeah. Oh, so it'll control all the other devices. It, I think it controls five of mine. Yeah, it's talking to everything that we have. Ah, yes, well, that is handy. All our one, effects two, pedals, or everything. footy, as the case four. may be. Yeah, it's very well. footy. Uh, we also have like <laughs> expression pedals that do different things depending on where you place them in their up and down motion. Okay. But the randomizer function is turned off, right? That's that's the main thing. I we don't want to accidentally so, yes. hit that. <laughs> um, because the, the song you're going to do next is another one of the uh, the singles from the record. There's, <laughs> there's a video released of this as well. It's called No Land. Uh, once again, the band is Buke and Gase. They are performing this Sunday evening for those of you who are listening upstate at uh, Catskill Mill in Catskill, New York, but right now performing live here in our new sound studio on this edition of the Soundcheck Podcast. <laughs>
That is Buke and Gase, uh, thoroughly enjoying themselves with that live performance of No Land, which is a track from their new album called Scholars. Aaron, at what point did that song become the the song it now is? Hilarious. (laughs) Hilarious. I mean, it has this kind of, you know, environmental kind of uh, overtone to it. You know, at what point did that come out for you in the process of writing? I think the chorus came out first. And then the rest that, so the rest, I just, the rest of the lyrics were built around the chorus. So you kind of, just kind of like found that idea in the original improv. No family, yeah, that was in it. Wow, okay. Because like, I mean, I don't know how many times we played that over. And then that's just like the vowels and consonants that came out. And that's... Cool. (laughs) So, uh, when you guys first joined us many years ago, you were Buke and Gase, G-A-S-S, because, you know, bass is spelled B-A-S-S. Right. Uh, then the next time you guys came in, you were Buke and Gase with an ampersand instead of an and, and Gase had been changed to G-A-S-E. Now you're Buke and, the ampersand is gone, <laughs> and still the G-A-S-E. Does, Are, it, does that matter? Is well, that something that matters. I, with, <laughs> the it ampersand matters. comes and goes, though. <laughs> yeah, and and the reason it matters, and the answer is yes, is because you know all all of us in radio now we're working from digital files. Mm. So every time you change the spelling of your <laughs> name, even if it's just an and or an ampersand, w- you know that's that doesn't show up. Oh, hmm. well. well, we're trying to make it interesting <laughs> for you guys. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Yeah. <laughs> So, uh, so on behalf of radio people who would like to play more of your music, let me just say, stick to one name. <laughs> <laughs> we like to be unsearchable. Yeah. <laughs> um, <laughs> scholars is the. Did you really not know this? That 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 this was. Like I didn't a, know that and or ampersand, the difference of would. Google make a uh, Google is fine with it. It's just like you know. I don't remember us officially do using the ampersand, but maybe yeah. we did. Mm. I don't remember. Mm. Yeah, it's on anyway. uh, all the stuff that came out in like 2013 has the ampersand. Huh. It's all. It's in all the. Now I'm going to nerd out. It's in the metadata. Okay. So well, yeah, I don't type metadata. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> you know, someone else did someone that. Someone else did that. <laughs> okay. Ah, uh, Scholars is the new record from Buke and Gase. Aaron Sanchez, Aaron Dyer, it's great to have you guys back. Thanks so much Congratulations. for having us. <laughs>